guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're gonna be talking all time favorites because I've been kind of in a skincare and actually beauty rut lately, but it's not a bad one, it's a really good one because I've been using the same stuff over and over again and it's been really, really working. So I'm really excited to show you. Uh, you'll see a lot of bold favorites that I probably talked about a lot and a lot and a lot again before on previous favorite videos. So uh, if you want to go check them out, I'll leave like a playlist um, here, down there, you do you. But yeah, so the ones that I've talked about and that I do have a review up on my blog, I will link the review in the description box and so I will only briefly talk about them. So this doesn't turn into a really long, boring video because I have a lot of favorites. Let's get started with skincare, obviously, always. So I've got three cleansers and that's crazy because... Um, am I telling you that I cannot live without three cleansers? Yes, yes I am. So uh, two of them are... All favorites, of course, the Tata Harper Purifying Cleanser that I cannot live without and the Oscar Rene Re Renaissance Cleansing Gel. This is a night cleanse for me and a morning cleanse, so I really do love this. This is my favorite morning cleanse. It's very, I've talked about it, very nourishing but doesn't leave a oily film, uh, exfoliating and it just gives a really, really vibrant, uh, brightening tone to the skin. Uh, the purifying is very purifying but not at all stripping and I do have a really, really dehydrated skin so this doesn't strip any oils at all but it's still very purifying. It's the most purifying yet non-stripping cleanser I own. Love it. The third cleanser is one I haven't talked about before and that uh, I've just gotten into lately. It's the MV Organic Skincare Gentle Cream Cleanser. Uh, this has been all over the place. The first time I heard about this was probably from Este, and you know that her skin has been awesome. I mean, she had really problematic skin, which has been really radiant lately. So that's always a selling point uh, and I really wanted to try this brand that I never got the chance to and I had so many cleansers that it's just overwhelming to try a new one but they sent me this along with two other products that I will be talking about soon on the blog and I really really love this cream cleanser and I didn't have really high expectations for it because it's just a cream cleanser it's like it on paper it sounds kind of bland but it's so freaking amazing uh, the skin is just so plump and moisturized and calm and peaceful afterwards. I really love this. My skin has been a touch bit sensitive, so this has been a go-to for me. Yeah, definitely. So now I'm going into oils, and of course I have to mention Luna. Luna is an all-time, all-time favorite forever and ever and ever. This is my third package. We'll be going to the fourth, and I think I will use this forever and ever and ever. I do use other retinol products that I alternate with Luna, but Luna is always there to kind of buffer because my skin is sensitive, and uh, this is a really, really pro-sensitive skin uh, retinol. And I've talked about it non-stop, so you will be tired of hearing me talk about it, but the new one is uh, Sunday Riley's UFO, which is a new oil for acne prone skin, and I've talked about it on a blog as well, and I really am so in love with it. My skin has never been clearer, and I'm absolutely sure it's not only because of UFO, but I think UFO really, really helped a lot. Anyway, powering on, I'm talking about May Lindstrom's Blue Cocoon. I will be doing a review on this uh, on my blog soon enough, but sweet baby Jesus. I've talked about it, I think, in previous favorites, in the summer favorites, because I've used this all summer to kind of, uh, as an after sun. This is good all year round, to be honest, because it's very nourishing, but not clogging and not, like, suffocating. I hate those balms and oils that you put on your skin and you can feel the skin, like, sweating. And this is not like that at all. It really melts into the skin and it just smells so amazing and it lasts a lifetime. It's pretty amazing. Next up, we have my old friend, your boy in BB cream in the shade Claire. This is my favorite uh, foundation base kind of product ever. I've worn it in every single tutorial I've put up, I think, uh, with the exception of maybe one or two uh, around summertime where this is a little bit too light. But other than that, this is my go-to product. It's a bit expensive for a BB cream, but it lasts a really long time and the texture, the finish, they are just all around amazing. It's so seamless and I love it. Of course, I apply that with none other than the beautiful Beauty Blender. I could not 
not mention this because, you know, if there's a product where the hype is right, it's the Beauty Blender. So now we've rolled kind of into makeup. Uh, so I do have to talk about my Makeup Geek eyeshadows. This is actually the only eyeshadow palette I brought with me to London. The others I still are still in Portugal kind of waiting to be brought here. Uh, but I brought this one thinking like this does all my outfits and I do miss some of my other shades of course. But yeah, this is a pretty basic one. I think these I don't use as much, they're more like special eyeshadows, but these here, these neutrals, these oranges, uh, you know, uh, chocolatey neutrals, really love them. I will put in the description box the shades that I'm talking about because otherwise I'll be here all day. But yeah, Makeup Geek eyeshadows, the neutral shades are to die for and definitely a staple in my stash. When we're talking primers, I've recently found the Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector and it's thebomb.com. It's definitely so amazing because it's one of those uh, um, pore perfecting primers that is doesn't feel like silicone-like. It just blends into skin, but it gives that mattifying effect without drying the skin out and without making it look really dull. So I really like to pair this up with a regular, like, luminizing primer. Before I go into my last items, which are two lipsticks, kinda, um, I wanna go into my perfume. So I'm talking about the Chloe uh, EDP. Absolutely adore this. Uh, Started using this this year. This is though, for all intents and purposes, my scent. Finally, I want to talk lipsticks. And first, I gotta mention the Mac Ruby Woo lipstick. It's one of those iconic reds that you hear about all the time. Anything, you know, it's just a red lipstick. It isn't. There's no red lipstick like the Ruby Woo. There is no Ruby Woo dupe like anywhere. It's a retro matte formula, which means it's super duper duper matte. But at the same time, super, super, super comfortable and long wearing and it doesn't crease, it doesn't um, accentuate your dry flakes. It's just perfect and the color is just, oh my god. One of my most worn lipsticks ever, my favorite red ever and I recommend it to every single one. I don't think there's any skin tone that doesn't look good with a Ruby Woo. And the second one is a little bit controversial and I'm gonna talk about it in depth. Uh, it's my favorite lipstick, yet I don't recommend it. The Jeffree Star Posh Spice Lipstick. There's been a lot of scandal and rumors and controversy around Jeffree Star and um, I used to be, like, I used to watch his videos and buy his makeup, so I had three of his lipsticks and this is my favorite Ever. I love the shade, I love the formula, I love everything about it. However, I cannot tell people, you know, go buy it because uh, I don't support him as a person anymore. Um, I do think that he has like, like half of him is really amazing and I so respect him for being himself, for, encour for encouraging other people to be themselves and he's been doing that for such a long time, ever since I remember, uh, ever since the MySpace uh, times, I do remember him there and I always looked up to him in that kind of inspirational way. But um, at that time and even now I didn't really keep up with who he was as a person and that really matters, that matters to me because I did stop buying Lime Crime for the all the crazy nonsense um, that happened with those year. So um, I will be naming a few dupes if you want them, uh, so I don't recommend that you buy their, their products, of course that's your a decision to make and that's why I'm saying this formula is in fact amazing. The shade is out of this world. I do have uh, two other Jeffree Star liquid lipsticks and those are the shades Mannequin and Scorpio that are totally different. The shade Scorpio is very moussey and very like it's hard to be precise with it. It's a little creasing, a little cracking after a while, and it's not the best, definitely. Uh, the mannequin shade, uh, it settles into fine lines very, very quickly. I do like, like the texture, um, and it doesn't look like it's wrong, but if you smile, you can see that in the cracks, there's nothing there. So that's really, really upsetting, though Posh Spice is not like that at all. And I don't know about the other shades because I don't, I stopped buying from him even though he does have really amazing shades. Uh, if you wanna get dupes, um, 
I have listed a few that I, I was searching and I do have some uh, kind of dupes. So if you want to be really exact and you want this shade and this shade only, I think the closest one is uh, the NYX Corset from their lingerie uh, shade. Uh, uh, range, <laughs> um, the shade is corset. If you want to go like around that shade, I'd say the Kat Von D bow and arrow that I've actually been wearing a lot is a little darker and a little pinker, pinkier. The Ofra Satan Island and the Ellie Splash Cryptic are also around this shade. They're a little darker, a little pinkier, a little rosier. Um, I'd say Lime Crimes Cashmere just as a reference as I do not do not recommend that as well but as a reference shade is not as dark as the Kat Von D one but it is a little pinkier a lot more pinkier than Posh Spice even a little bit grayer there's the LA Splash OG Ghoulish so I think your best shot here is NYX Corset even though I don't have it so I can't attest to the quality of the formula, the the shade is very very similar and I've been going on and on and on about this and it's time to stop because honestly I'm tired of talking about it. So overall that said, uh, I'd like you to in this video tell me about all your stuff. Tell me what are your all-time favorites that you cannot live without. Also tell me what you think about all the Jeffree Star drama and the Lime Crime drama and the Gerard Cosmetics the drama and everything, all of those brands that Everyone's been kind of boycotting. Uh, would you? Does it matter to you that the person behind the brand is a jerk? Does it matter who they are when it comes to buying their products? I mean, because for me, what I think is, I don't want to contribute to a person that's doing that and being such a bad person to other people, making other people feel bad. So if you're treating your customers like shit, I'm not gonna buy from you. Basically, that's what I'm saying. So I do not encourage that. But you know, everyone thinks differently, and I do like to hear everybody's opinions. Anyway, um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more, and don't forget to go to the description box for all the links of the reviews I have on these products. Uh, please tell me what you like to see next on the channel because I always want to know what's up with your little minds. Also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. All the details are down below in the description box. And I will be seeing you next week, so bye!